welcome the students of class 8 welcome to our social science irani class and today in this class today going to discuss history chapter 4 exercise questions and answers and the name of the chapter is tribal dikus and the vision of the golden age so let's start the question and answers of that chapter so the first question is fill in the blanks so i have given directly the answer here so the answer number a the british described the tribal people as wild and savage answer number b the method of showing seeds in jhum cultivation is known as broadcasting it is the answer is broadcasting okay so blank i have already filled so number c the tribal chiefs got land titles so the answer in the blank it is land the tribal chiefs got land titles in central india under the british land settlements number d answer is tribal went tribals went to work in the dash of assam and the dash of bihar so tribals went to the work went to work in the tree plantations tea plantations of assam and coal mines in bihar so that's the answer of question number 1 fill in the blanks now question number 2 and the question is state whether true or false answer number a so I, again i have given directly the answers answer a jhum cultivators plow the land and show seeds it is a false statement number b cocoons were brought from the santhals and sold by the traders at five times the purchase price it is also true number c birsa urged his followers to purity to purify themselves comma give up drinking liquor and stopped believing in witchcraft and sorcery so it is also true number d answer the british wanted to preserve the tribal way of life it is also a false statement okay so that's all from question number 2 segment state whether true or false now in the next slide question number 3 it is what problems did shifting cultivators face under british rule what problems did shifting cultivators face under british rule and the answer is for administrative and economic reasons comma the british government forced the shifting cultivators to take up shifting cultivation full stop to take up settled cultivation sorry full stop but type of land and shortage of water meant they could not produce enough full stop many of them had to move on the other areas in search of work and livelihood comma when forests were declared as state property and access to the forests were was restricted okay so that's the answer of question number 3 now next slide question number 4 and the question is how did the powers of tribal chiefs change under colonial rule i am repeating the question again how did the powers of the tribal chiefs change under colonial rule and answer is the functions and powers of the tribal chiefs changed considerably under the british rule full stop they lost much of their administrative power full stop they were forced to follow the laws made by the british full stop they had to pay tribute to the british and were expected to discipline their people on behalf of the british government full stop last line however comma they were allowed to keep their land titles over a cluster of villages and could rent out lands so this is the answer of question number 4 now question number 5 and the question is what accounts for the anger of the tribals against the dikus what accounts for the anger of the tribals against the dikus okay and the answer is the following facts account 
for their anger against the dikus hyphen the so there are four points i have given so you have to write point wise one by one so point number one the british land policies and forest laws were destroying their traditional land system and evacuated them from their own ancestral lands and forced them to pay revenues full stop so many people became homeless and went in search of work and livelihood in different places so this is the point number one now point number two hindu landlords and moneylenders luring tribals luring tribes to take cash loans luring means provoking and at high interests and they remained indebted throughout their lives and lost their land i am repeating again point number 2 hindu landlords and money lenders luring tribes to take cash loans at high interests and they remain indebted throughout their lives and lost their land Point number three: Missionaries were criticizing their traditional culture and converting them into Christianity. Number four: The traders would buy goods from the tribals at very high, at very low rates, and sell them at uh, sell them same products, sell the same products at high prices, comma thereby making huge profits and tribals were exploited so this is the answer of question number 5 okay now question number 6 that what was birsa's vision of golden age why do you think such a vision appealed to the people of the region and the answer is birsa munda's vision of a golden age was a satyu the age of truth when mundas would live a good life construct embankments comma tap natural springs plant trees and orchards comma practice cultivation to earn their living with no vices like drinking liquor witchcraft sorcery and uncleanliness full stop they will not kill their brethren and relatives full stop they would live honestly this was an age when the mundas had begun free from the oppression of dikus so in bracket enemies full stop they visualize of a time when the ancestral right of the community would be restored full stop so this is the answer of the first question from question number 6 the second question's answer is such a vision appealed to the people of the region because they were very much eager to lead a free life all the vices and outside forces like hindu landlords money lenders missionaries traders and europeans that we have talked about were the root causes of their misery and suffering so that's all students from the question of the session thank you for